right, it's Jess, so Jess makes sense. And today I'm going over my January and February reading wrap up, and then I will show you my hopeful March TBR. There we go. Um, I do have my book journal and I will be referring to this reading journal a lot because I have the worst memory ever. Even if I read something a month ago, I have already forgotten it. So if I keep looking down, that's why. But the first one is an audiobook and it's Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton. He played Draco Malfoy in Harry Potter. It was incredible. Definite five star rating. Listen to it on audiobook because he narrates his own audiobook and his like he tells stories but because he's the one who experienced it I just feel like it made it that much better. He tells about Harry Potter, behind the scenes of Harry Potter, references his friends a lot, um, his little crush with Hermione Granger, Emma Watson, and talks about the good, the bad, his substance abuse, alcoholism, um, his failed marriage. Like he talks about his personal life, but it's a lot of Harry Potter. It is so good. It made me like him even more. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, just make sure, please, for me, listen to it on audiobook. So good. Five star. First book I read in January. Awesome. Next is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This book was an amazing, amazing thrillers. And a lot of the times I predict what's going to happen. And every like quarter of the book I kept saying, I uh, read it on my Kindle, by the way, wherever my Kindle is. Every quarter of the book, I would be like, okay, I know what's going to happen. Okay, I now I know how the ending's going to be. Okay, then the 75% in, okay, now I know how the ending's going to be. My head turned so many times. I don't even know what to tell you. A husband and wife were having a rocky relationship. Uh, she won this thing through her job to go to this house and like this, it's just crazy. I don't want to give too much away. In fact, I just heard, I think on YouTube, I just heard somebody say that it was a good book and that's it. I didn't want to know any more and I suggest you just dive into it. It's so good. Another five star read. So good. Alice Feeney blew me away on that one amazing that's what i wrote kept me guessing the entire time oh the man has the husband has um facial recognition issue like he doesn't recognize faces and so he doesn't really know who people are until he like senses them it's very odd but once you get into it you'll be like okay i get it i get it okay the next one is in a holidays by christina lauren I think those are two different girls. Romance novel, read it on my Kindle. It's a Groundhog Day scenario, um, and it's about these families who all stay at a cabin every year. And driving, when they were driving home, the mom, the dad, her and her brother, who were like in their like 20s, I guess, they got into an accident and then she wakes up and it's the same um Christmas Eve all over again and it keeps happening and keeps happening and there's a love interest I didn't mind the book I really didn't I actually thought it to be like a cute romance book and like childhood friends who become lovers very cute but my problem with this book is even at the end they never explain why it was a Groundhog Day they never reference back the accident I'm just still like, I'm just still trying to think if I missed something because it, it, it's like the, it's like there, there was like a half of the story, like it wasn't complete. And therefore I gave it four stars, which is pushing it. I really like the enjoyment factor was four. the craft. I gave like a two star. So really it's probably like a three and a half star four is pushing it, but really cute. I actually did like the characters. I know some people didn't. But explain why the ground, Groundhog Day happened. Or else, did she have a brain injury? Did she dream all of it? Like, what happened? That's my two cents about that one. The next one I listened to on audiobook, and it was The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Um, it's about a lady, Casey Fletcher. She's 35 years old. She's a widow. Um, her husband passed away on the lake. She is kind of like a nosy neighbor. She got pushed to this lake house because there was drama because she's a celebrity. 
and her mom made her go to it to like take a chill pill, ignore the media, get out of the spotlight, and a bunch of stuff goes happen. And a bunch of stuff happens between the neighbors. It's a thriller. I I did think it was good. I know some people said that it wasn't good. I actually did enjoy it. I gave it a three and a half stars. So to me, a three and a half stars is a good book. I didn't mind it at all. It's not like the rock, paper, scissors where I was guessing. I kind of like, kind of was right throughout the whole thing. So it was good. I think it was worth a read. Um, the next one, that was book four. I read nine books total. The next one was The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. Another Groundhog Day scenario. Um, I, I won't give any spoilers away, but let's just say the same thing with the In a Holidays. Why am I reading these Groundhog Day books? Because they're never explaining why there's a Groundhog Day. Literally, zero explanation about, and the same thing happens. Like, she gets into a car accident every day. She wakes up. I, I, it's Valentine's Day. It's supposed to be her favorite day. She wants to, like bring her boyfriend presents and finally tell him she loves him. It's this whole thing and she, all this stuff happens. It's a good book, the plot of it. And I do like the character building, but the the lack of explanation on the Groundhog Day is really annoying me. And for that reason, I gave this a four star. It could have even been a five star for me, but I gave it a four star. I just don't think that I'm going to pick up another Groundhog Day style book because this is the second book that's let me down that there's literally no explanation of the Groundhog Day. And if I'm missing something and Jessica's just like a little doot 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 right now, please explain. Please tell me in the comments, but not for In a Holidays or The Dover was there an explanation for the Groundhog Day. So that was my thoughts on that. Three and a half star. The next was Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. This was like creepy, disturbing, I guess it throughout the whole thing. Um, her daughter Ellie went missing 10 years later. She's still looking for Ellie. It's, it's very odd, kind of perverse to me. Ugh, ugh. I just cringed. I just cringed. I don't know why I gave it four star because it's really probably like a two and a half star. I just didn't I listened to it on audiobook and on I read some on my Kindle and I just never really got into it. I'm not good at DNFing a book, so I I finished it even though I wanted to not finish it, but I just it just I don't know if I would recommend the book. I'm glad I read it, I'm glad I finished it, but I didn't really enjoy it. That's it. You can read the synopsis by yourself. I started The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I gave it a five star. Five star for enjoyment, craft, and overall five star. So good. There's so many puzzles and twists and games in it. I will say that the first book, which I'm 46% through the second book, um, I just feel like it was a lot of character building. So I hope that the second and third one even has more of like that oomph, that plot to it. But I just found it to be really good and just the just me imagining the house of it just is so cool to me. And I know they said that there's like knives out that's similar to this book. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I wish that they made the series into like a full on movie. I think that would be so cool. Just looking at the house that this guy created would be like worth the watch. But I liked it, loved it, gave it a five star. Can't wait to can't wait to finish the next one. I use the Libby app to read and I got 46% through and my time snatched it away. So I have to go, I'm in line again to get it. And so then I'll finish it. That's the only bad thing about Libby is that like once it's, once your 14 days are up, your 14 days are up, and that's it. So maybe I'll buy it. Um, the next one is Hooked, and I listened to it on audiobook. That's Emily McIntyre. She does like retellings of um, like Disney fairy tales, and this one's Peter Pan in Hooked, per Hook's perspective, which his name is James, and he's trying to get Wendy to basically piss off Peter Pan and Wendy is the daughter of Peter Pan, and a lot happens. It is 
the spiciest book I've ever read. I mean, every time Wendy and James, aka Hook, are together, it's nothing but spice. So if you like that, it's cool. I did give it a four star because I did find the actual plot of it, like the overall book, really enjoyable. And not that I'm like prudish when it comes to spicy books, but it just made it like, like just after a while you were like, come on, like let's, let's get on with the book. Like this is the same things happening over and over and over. But I did think it was a good book. I want to read the other ones, like the Aladdin retelling, the, um, I think there's the Lion King retelling. The only problem is, is if it's sad that I don't like it. Okay, the next one, last one, book number nine is Funny You Should Ask. And if you want to know why I got this, I am 100% guilty of getting this because I thought the cover was so cool for Valentine's Day. And I still think it's so cool. I rated it a three star. I'm sorry, Alyssa Sussman. But I thought that it was about a... Um, celebrity who what it what what is he in oh james bond movie a celebrity he's in james bond movie he got picked for it not everybody in society is happy about it she's a journalist she's trying to like make him look a little better in the limelight and so she's gonna do like a, a nice article about him to hopefully turn around the fans of james bond movies it was back then when it happened and then now, which is 10 years later, it's a good book, but it kind of lost its like oomph. There wasn't anything that was like, oh, there, there's nothing, there was nothing page turning about it in my opinion. It was a solid book if you just want fluff, if you're like just trying to do a quick read on an airplane and you just want to make sure you're like through the book. Um, I did think the ending was cute. It was probably the best case scenario for me because there was a little bit surprise, a little bit of a surprise, and that's what made it three star for me because other than that, I would have given it a two star. All of these also are just my opinion. Some people love books that are different than some other people, just like movies, just like anything. So this is all my opinion and you may have loved some of these books and you might be yelling at your screen right now like Jessica, how did you not love that book? Or Jessica, how did you not hate that book? So like I said, it's my opinion. I love to hear other people's opinions. That's why I try not to go on Goodreads before I read the book because I wanna make sure the opinion is of my own. And I feel like even if you don't feel like you're being influenced, to have a different opinion. Generally speaking, it's the human brain just does that. But that's it for my reading wrap up. In January and February, I read nine books. I work full time, so nine books is probably average for me for those two months. Some's gonna be, sometimes it's gonna be more, sometimes it's gonna be less. January for my job, I had inventory, so I also was traveling for the first three weeks. So hopefully March, I have a little bit more, but I didn't overwhelm myself. Um, this is my March TBR. I've already picked out the books. Uh, the first one, because I just got it the other day and I'm just so excited about it. I have already read Things We Never Get Over in December, I believe. This was a five-star rating. It's one of my favorite books of all times. I read it on the Kindle and I bought the physical copy just because I was so in love with it um, that I'm probably going to read it again. And I'm not one of those people who reads books again, but it was just so good that I just, I just, I just love it. I can't get over it. So I think you guys need to read it. The character uh, Knox in this book, I always get it confused. Knox, 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 Knox. Yes, Knox. And in the second book, it's Nash. So Knox and Nash. Um, Knox reminds me a lot of Luke from Gilmore Girls. And I think that was part of the reason why I fell in love with it. I just love grumpy men, but like who, who have giant hearts in reality and they help people even begrudgingly because they want to but they are trying to act cool like they don't like they're like they're just grumpy that's just how they are I just love it so this book was amazing so to continue it I of course grabbed this one the day it came out the morning it came out I ran to Barnes and Noble and grabbed it as quick as I could I'm like I would say a little more than a third of the way through it this is about his brother and a love interest. And then the last one is uh, the coming out in, I think, September. 
I might be wrong, but she is so good. Lucy score. I love her books. Um, and I just can't wait to finish this. It's so good so far. So I'm very, very excited about that one. So this one will get finished in March. So con consider this to be one of the books. The next one, I always like to do like read something based on a holiday that's coming around. So this one I chose is the Mag Magician's Daughter by Hate H. G. Perry. I just, I just think of Harry Potter when I would do this. H.G. Perry. And I'll read the synopsis and you'll know why I picked this. I also love that the pages are, are like kind of messed up. Like they're not even. Why do, Why is that so satisfying? But it says, um, off the coast of Ireland, St. Patrick's Day is coming, is, sits a legendary island hidden by magic. A place of ruins and ancient trees, seesaw air, and fairy lore. High Brazil is the only home Biddy has ever known. Washed up on its shore as a baby, Biddy lives a quiet life with her guardian, the miracle magician Rowan, a life she finds increasingly stifling. One night, Rowan fails to return from her mysterious travels, and to find him, Biddy must venture into the outside world for the first time. But Rowan has powerful enemies, forces who have hoarded the world's magic and have set their sights on the magician's many secrets. Biddy may not keep... May, Biddy may be the key to stopping them, yet the closer she gets to answers, the more she questions everything she's ever believed about Rowan, her past, and the nature of magic itself. So it's a mag magical book. It's based, off, it's based off the coast of Ireland, and I just thought it was the perfect book to read for St. Patrick's Day. I have um, a couple friends who are reading this with me, so I'm excited about that. So that's book two. I just started, I'm only 10% in, of Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I hope that's right. Uh, I'm listening to it on audiobook. Generally speaking, most of my books are from my Kindle because my husband falls asleep early and I read next to him, so the Kindle's the best bet. But I'd rather have... I'd rather read a physical copy, but a lot of times Kindles happen. And audiobooks, how I always get an extra book in is audiobooks because if I'm grocery shopping, if I'm shopping, if I'm taking the dogs for a walk, if I'm doing laundry, anything like that, I'll put my ear pods in and listen to a book. So that's usually how I get an extra book out of it. This one is called In Five Years. This doesn't look like it's gonna be like that huge of a read. I just love my little bookmark. It's one of those holographic ones. I got it a long time ago. Um, but this one is about a girl who falls in love with this guy. He proposed to her. She gets engaged and then she goes to sleep and she awakes in a different apartment with a different ring on her finger and beside a very different man. She spends one hour, five years in the future before she wakes up again in her own home on the brink of midnight, and it's one hour she cannot shake. In five years is an unforgettable love story, but it is not the one you're expecting. So she's engaged to this guy, she wake, she falls asleep, wakes up in a different apartment with a different guy, with a different ring on, and then it snaps right back to her waking up next to the guy she's engaged to. So this looks really interesting to me. I'm super excited to read it, and it doesn't look like that big and intimidating. So hopefully I'll get to this one too. I'm not giving myself, I hate giving myself a giant TBR because if I don't complete it, it makes me feel bad. So I'd rather err on the side of caution and read more than to set myself up for failure. But just like this, this one is giant. So this is going to take me a while. So that's why I didn't choose as many books. I'll probably end up reading like five. And then this is Misdemeanor. Uh, it was the book of the month, their monthly pick at Barnes and Noble, I think last month or the month before. I don't know, but it's a nice, it looks like a nice, quick, easy read. It's about a lady who is a lawyer. She, she got caught doing some dirty stuff on top of an apartment building, got caught. She's a lawyer. She got fired. Her life's falling apart. And then she kind of does this like murder mystery thing of snitching and calling 911 of a guy across the street. It's a, it's, it's supposed to be like, just kind of like a funny guessing mystery, I guess. But we'll see if it's good. 
uh, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I did just buy quite a few books. So I'll do a book haul separately because we're already at 20 minutes. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.